Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Asif Nawaz. Here we see today we are going to make a new video regarding the colon. In the previous class, I already discussed you about the overall anatomy about the colon or the large intestine. So, the large intestine has a cecum with vermiform appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon descending colon and the sigmoid colon rectum and anal canal. So today's class is about the colon that means the colon is a part of large intestine it is also called the large gut. So, la so colon starts from the cecum where the cecum ends. So, this is the ascending colon, this is the transverse colon and this is the descending colon and the rest of the portion is sigmoid colon. So, it is totally we can say that the colon. So, colon has four parts. So, this is the ascending colon. So, ascending colon is for about 15 centimeter long, transverse colon is 50 centimeter long and which is suspended anteriorly, descending colon is 25 centimeter long and the sigmoid colon is 40 centimeter long which is curved and which comes forward and, and attached with the rectum. So, in the previous class, I already told you that there are three longitudinal muscles anteriorly, tinea libera, posteriorly, tinea mesocolica, and the laterally, posterolaterally, tinea omentalis. So, ascending colon consists of these three longitudinal muscles. So, what are the relation of ascending colon? So, as in the anteriorly, there is uh, nothing but the longitudinal muscles, but medially, there is a coils of intestine and the tinea, the tinea mesocolica, but in the posterolaterally, tinea omentalis, but direct posteriorly, there are multiple structures, some are vessels some are muscles, nerve fibers that present like subcostal vessels like ureter, part of the ureter, gonadal vessels and the lower pole of the kidney and the most posteriorly there are other structures of posterior abdominal wall like fascia iliaca iliosphos muscle, iliohypogastric nerve, ilioinguinal nerve and the quadratus lumborum muscles and others. Those are the structures of the posterior abdominal wall. Those are the non-peritoneal. So, in case of ascending colon, anterior surface is peritoneal but the posterior surface is solely non-peritoneal. Now, the when the transverse colon starts after the folding, you can see this is the fold. It is called the right colic flexure. Right colic flexure. Colon becomes folded and comes anteriorly and started the transverse colon. So, right colic flexure is also called the right hepatic flexure. That is hepatic flexure. So, in case here the three structures become changed that longitudinal muscles tinea omentalis becomes the anterior layer okay tinea omentalis you can see tinea omentalis becomes anteriorly and tinea libera goes inferiorly and tinea mesocolica goes posteriorly so appendices epicoeci 
will be present in anterior layers in case of ascending colon but in case of transverse colon those appendices epiploidy goes inferior okay you can see the multiple inferior appendices epiploidy then this is the transverse colon and the transverse colon is the longest part of the colon and it suspends anterior part of the abdominal cavity it has its own mesentery that means the transverse muscle colon posteriorly it is related with the body and lower part of the border of the pancreas this mesocolon transverse mesocolon has four layers two layers is attached with the greater omentum and the second third and fourth layer is solely transverse colon related mesentery so in case of pancreatic surgery sometimes window become must be made through the bloodless plane through this uh, mesentery so this kind of area is developed due to some surgical importance because that mesocolon contains the vascular channels like artery vein nerves lymphatics all are goes through in between the mesocolon then the transverse colon becomes descending colon this is the descending colon about 25 cm which is start after the flexion so this is the left colic flexure it is also called the splenic flexure here also the longitudinal three muscles becomes like as like as the ascending colon so the longitudinal muscles anterior tinea libera then uh, posterior medial tinea mesocolica and lateral omentalis but in case of sigmoid colon the tinea omentalis and the tinea libera becomes a band anterior band of the rectum it becomes a band and tinea mesocolica goes posteriorly in case of recto sigmoid junction but recto sigmoid junction that means absence of these three muscles become reunited it starts the 5 cm prior to the ilocecal junction sorry recto sigmoid junction so this is the rectum this is the sigmoid so this is the recto sigmoid junction you can see the three muscle fibers becomes reunited anterior to an another another is posteriorly so this two muscle band becomes one that irunation occurs 5 cm prior to the recto sigmoid junction here is the artery supply of the large cut so all the artery supply you have seen in the screen those are present in between the mesentery okay so these have their own mesentric fold so ascending colon transverse colon and the descending colon according to the development ascending colon cecum vertebral appendix and the in case of transverse colon up to right two third and left one third okay so if i see there is an imaginary plane here developmentally this is the part of the foregut and this is the part, part uh, sorry this is the part of the mid gut and then this is the part of hind gut so the mid gut is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery this is the superior mesenteric artery which is one of the important branch of or ventral branch of the abdominal aorta so abdominal aorta so ascending colon and the transverse colon is supplied by the as correspondingly 
ilocolic artery right colic artery and part of the middle colic artery so these three colic branches are arises from superior mesenteric artery so these artery present in between the mesenteric fold okay this is the ilocolic artery it gives supply the cecum and the appendic and appendicular artery it gives supply to the vermiform appendix and the this is the right colic artery the right colic artery becomes multiple branched as a vasa recta vasa longa and there are multiple vasa recta and vasa longa present and there is a curved branches this is called the marginal artery of drumann marginal because it lies marginal plane to the colon it gives supply to the wall of the colon that helps in nutrition gives nutrition to surrounding wall along with the viscera and this is the middle colic artery it lies medially that's why it is called all the middle colic artery middle colic artery has connection with the other artery with the marginal artery of drumann so marginal artery these all are the marginal artery of drumann they are connected with each other so middle colic artery will connected with the left colic artery and also the branches of the right colic artery okay through the marginal artery of drumann it is very important it has some surgical importance because uh, there are some malignancy there are some other diseases that occurs in the colon so that colonic part must be resected so knowing the supply of artery and uh, is very important for plane of resection the plane of surgery resection is being made by knowing the supply of artery so uh, the middle colic right colic and the ilocolic artery will give supply to cecum ascending colon and right two third of the transverse colon and the rest left two third of the transverse colon and the descending colon and the sigmoid colon which is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery so inferior mesenteric artery is one of the ventral branch of the abdominal aorta it has also three three or four different branches like one is left colic artery which is terminally divided by a marginal artery of drumann which will connect it with the branches of middle colic artery and another branches which gives supply to the sigmoidal artery so here three or four sigmoidal arteries present which is arises from the inferior mesenteric artery so one two three so these three artery are called the together sigmoid arteries that will also will terminally linked as a straight artery of the sigmoid colon so here you can see the straight artery of the sigmoid colon and there is another branch and the, when the artery become folded and reunited in the superior rectal artery superior rectal artery which is supply to the rectum okay it is a portal branch portal supply it also arises from the inferior mesenteric artery sometimes this artery can be connected with the sigmoidal arteries okay it is also connected with the sigmoidal arteries but all are the branches are originated from the inferior mesenteric artery so that is all about the artery supply the venous drainage of the large intestine that means the colon so here the ascending transverse and it is a cut section of the transverse colon and the the rest of the portion 
is called the descending column and the sigma column. As you can see, as like as the artery supply, the ascending column and the right two third of the transverse column also supplied by the superior mesenteric vein. Like superior mesenteric vein and their venous drainage also goes as same plane of the artery supply. So it also present in the mesenteric fold. So this is the superior mesenteric vein and this is the iliocolic vein. This is the iliocolic vein. This is the right colic vein. Okay, right colic vein, iliocolic vein. And there is a medial colic vein also. It is a it has been uh, cut sected, resected. So not here. So terminally they are also give some straight vein. Okay. So these are the important things. So in case of late two third and the descending colon and the sigmoid colon which is supplied by inferior mesenteric vein. So this is the inferior mesenteric vein. So inferior mesenteric vein will make drainage to the splenic vein. Okay, this is the splenic vein and this is the superior mesenteric vein. These two veins united to form the portal vein and the inferior mesenteric vein drains in the portal splenic vein. Okay, so it must be remembered that inferior mesenteric vein will drain into the splenic vein. So this is the left colic vein. Okay, this is the left colic vein which gives supply to the left two third of the transverse colon along with the part of the descending colon. And this is the inferior mesenteric vein that will gives every venous drainage. And these are the sigmoidal vein. So as like as artery, it has also three to four sigmoidal vein that will give supply to the sigmoid take venous drainage from the sigmoid colon and the this is the median sacral vein so that is all about the venous drainage lymphatic drainage so lymphatic drainage is very much important for surgery especially but also in anatomy sometimes these lymphatic drainage must be asked to be examined. It has some clinical importance because malignancy or other diseases that will spread out to the distant places or in the different organs by the lymphatic drainage like lymphoma, like cancers, like colonic cancers. So they will spread through the lipidic drainage. Okay, so in this we come and the in this in the previous class I told you that these diseases will go through by the sickle nodes, the pre sickle nodes and the pre iliac pre aortic nodes. Now the rest of the portion that is ascending colon, transverse colon and descending colon which is also keeps supplied by the paracolic nodes. You can see that there are many paracolic nodes. These are the paracolic nodes. Why it is called paracolic? Because this lies along with the wall of the large intestine. So now the second branches are the that let is right colic nodes. This is the middle colic nodes. There are many middle colic nodes, right colic nodes, left colic node, some sigmoidal nodes. So these are the sigmoidal nodes. So right colic, middle colic, they will get drainage from the lymphatic circulation from the paracolic nodes. So first paracolic, then it will drain to the middle colic, right colic, and the ilocolic. So then, and in case of left side, 
it will drain through the left colic nodes then ultimately go to the periodic node those all are go to the periodic node so and the vascular plane like superior mesenteric nodes like celiac nodes it is the superior mesenteric node this is the inferior mesenteric nodes and some other periodic nodes so these three are important ultimate waypoint when where the lymphatic drain is ultimately settled down so these are the sigmoidal nodes now the para colic nodes so ultimately ultimately their direction towards the cisterna cavity ultimately first para colic then middle right sigmoidal nodes then they will reunited to drain the superior inferior mesenteric node then ultimately they will enters or drained ultimately in the cisterna cavity okay this is the nervous system according to the development all the part of the mid gut that is up to the right two third of the transverse colon is all are the supplied by the sympathetic and parasympathetic supply so parasympathetic is uh, as like as normal like fore gut and up to the mid gut that means up to the right two third of the transverse colon parasympathetic supply is vagus as like before but the next part that the hind gut is supplied by the sacral second third fourth which is a parasympathetic supply sacral second third and fourth is called the nervi agentis or pelvic splanchnic nerve why it is called so pelvic that means the organ present in the pelvic cavity so this is the pelvic cavity so there are many organs present in the pelvic cavity and the splanchnic knee means the nerve supply that will go to the visceral peritoneum like the visceral surface of the any organ so pelvic splanchnic that means the organ lies in this here those all are the pelvic organ so they are the part of the hind gut so hind gut is supplied by the by the pelvic splanchnic nerve sacral second third and fourth and the sympathetic supply is done by the hypogastric nerve plexus so in case of ascending colon and the right two third of the transverse colon which is supplied by the superior mesenteric ganglion those all are the come from superior mesenteric ganglion but parasympathetic supply is vagus but in case of left side that means the hind gut parasympathetic supply is by pelvic splanchnic nerve sacral second third and fourth and the sympathetic supply is hypogastric nerve plexus which is arises from the lumbar first and second vertebra so that is all about the nerve supply of the colon thank you very much for watching i hope you will learn the whole colonic part in the mbbs exam along with the other exam visceras must be displayed and you must identify the structures parts and their vascular plane like artery vein lymphatic drainage along with some nerve supply you must explain according to their development thank you very much for watching